to the story. Great. Can, this is the book. Can everybody see my book cover? It's called Ruxa and Raina, A Cheetah and Dog's True Story of Friendship and Miracles. And you see these, these are footprints of Ruxa and Raina, and I'm going to talk about them a little bit later after I read the story. Okay, let's get started. Welcome to a new home. Here's the picture we're looking at. A precious baby cheetah chirped loudly as the cargo jet he was riding in landed at San Diego International Airport. The two week old cub was born at a zoo in Oregon. And Oregon is a state just north of California, but his mother was not able to care for him. So now he would be raised by people at his new home, the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. By the time the cheetah had reached the Safari Park's animal care center, the little guy was hungry. The, snug, the cub snuggled in his caregiver's arms as he slurped milk from a bottle. After he finished eating, the caregiver gently patted the cub's back to burp him and then laid him on a soft blanket for a nap. You know how kids are burped after they eat, how babies are? Well, this little cheetah was burped as well, just very softly tapped on his back. The cub was named Ruxa, which means spirit in Somali. And Somalia is a country in Africa where cheetahs live. Although he was small, he weighed less than three pounds. Ruxa had lots of energy and he wanted to have things his way. He chirped to let his keepers know when he was hungry or when he wanted to play. And you may not know this, but baby cheetahs make a chirping sound that actually sounds like a bird, kind of a chirp, chirp, kind of just kind of like a bird sounds like it's chirping. And that's what a baby cheetah chirp sounds like. Two weeks after Ruxa arrived at the safari park, he met a special animal that was going to become his playmate and best friend for life, Raina. But Raina wasn't a cheetah. She was a five week old Rhodesian Ridgeback puppy. And here you can see this is a, a dog and not a cat. And Raina's name means germ, uh, guardian in the German language. Best buddies, let's see it. I'm, I'm trying to keep that glare off the photos. Raina was a sweet puppy, although at eight pounds, she was more than twice Rooks's size. When they first met, Rooks stomped his feet and chirped at her. Then he got braver. He pounced on Raina's head and ran away. Soon they loved wrestling with each other, but the puppy was always gentle with Rooksa. Raina seemed to know that she was much bigger than her cheetah friend, so she did not mind that he pounced on her head. While they were getting to know each other, Ruxa and Raina played together every day but slept in different areas. It wasn't long before they became best buddies and wanted to be together all the time. And since they were raised together as cub and pup, they actually became like a brother and sister together. a problem with Rooks's legs. When Rooksa was nine weeks old, the caregivers noticed that his legs were bowed. The veterinarians hoped they would grow straight as he got older. Rooksa needed strong, healthy legs to be able to run fast like other cheetahs. If you look closely, you can kind of see how his legs are bowed in this picture. Ruxa and Raina grew old enough to move from the care center to a new home where animal uh, behavior specialists would care for them. Now Ruxa and Raina were never apart. They lived in the same habitat. They spent all day playing and all night snuggling while they slept. And sometimes Ruxa and Raina actually used these, each other as pillows.
animal ambassadors. The pair learned to become animal ambassadors so they could do special programs to help teach people about cheetahs and how they need to be protected in the wild. Raina was like a security blanket for Ruxa. With Raina by his side, Ruxa stayed calm and relaxed on their walks. He trusted Raina's instincts and he felt very, very safe with her. And while uh, Ruxa was still little, his bowed legs didn't prevent him from playing or walking. But as Ruxa grew bigger, his legs did not grow straighter. They were still bowed. For Ruxa to lead a normal life, he needed surgery. Otherwise, his legs would hurt him as he got older and he might not be able to walk. And the veterinarians weren't sure if he would ever be able to run even if he did have the surgery. And these are photos of our uh, veterinarian looking at x-rays of Ruxa's legs. And in this shot, you can actually see how they are bowed. This is better than the photo I just showed you. Surgery day. Both Ruxa and Reina went to the hospital the day of Ruxa's surgery. The, the caregivers and Reina waited anxiously inside the door of the operating room. It was hard for Reina to be apart from Ruxa. She wanted to be near him at all times, and I'm sure she was a bit worried about him. After the operation, Reina sat near Ruxa as he recovered in a kennel. Ruxa had been given medicine to make him sleep during the surgery, so he didn't wake up right away. The caregivers could tell Reina was concerned. When Ruxa finally woke up, he whimpered and then he chirped and batted at the door with his paw. As one of the caregivers opened the door, Reina squeezed in and snuggled up to her cheetah friend. And with Reina by his side, Ruxa immediately calmed down. He felt very safe and comfortable, even though he had just had surgery with Reina by his side. No slowing down for Ruxa. The caregivers tried to limit Ruxa's activity after the surgery so his legs would heal, but he didn't slow down. Within a day, he chewed off his bandages and he was going for walks with Reina. And even though the veterinarians weren't sure Ruxa would ever be able to run, he didn't know that and he began to run anyway. Everyone was ecstatic. That means that they were really happy because we honestly didn't know that Ruxa would be able to run after his surgery and he did it. No one told him he couldn't run, so he ran. Three months after the surgery, Ruxa and Reina want, went to play in a big grassy habitat. They raced through the grass, around trees and up and down hills. They climbed on boulders and they even tackled each other. And just think about it, only three months ago, Ruxa had surgery on his legs. Nothing seemed to stop Ruxa from doing anything he wanted to do as long as Reina was with him. Over the next year and a half, Ruxa and Reina became famous. Newspapers and magazines featured stories about them. They appeared on television shows. People who visited the safari park watched Ruxa and Reina run on a straight track at Shiley's Cheetah Run. The track is 100 yards long, which is the same length as a football field. Ruxa chased a toy zebra that was attached to a pulley. People were amazed at how fast he could run. His top speed was 70 miles per hour. And of course, Reina the dog ran slower than Ruxa. And cheetahs are the fastest animal on land and they can run up to 70 miles an hour. And remember at one point, we didn't think Ruxa would be able to run and here he is running 70 miles an hour. Raina's top speed was 27 miles per hour. That is still really fast. There is no way I could ever even run 27 miles an hour. I, I think that's about the speed of the fastest humans on earth. Something's wrong with Raina. And I see a hand raised. Um, we will answer questions 
after I finish reading the story to you. So save that question, try to remember it. One warm summer day when Ruxa and Reina were two years old, their caregivers noticed that Reina was limping. The veterinarians thought she might have a foot or shoulder injury, so they took x-rays. Although the x-rays didn't show anything unusual, Reina was given some pain medication. Reina's limp didn't go away though, and then her shoulder began to swell. Veterinarians took a closer look at Raina's shoulder by taking a CT scan of it. And this is a, a picture of a CT scan. A CT scan combines X-ray images on a computer and they create a detailed picture of the bones, blood vessels, and soft tissues in Raina's body. And this is what a CT scan looks like. They were surprised by what they found in the CT scan. Raina had cancer. She had a big tumor on her shoulder and two smaller tumors on her body. This kind of cancer had no cure. Raina had months, maybe weeks left to live. This is very, this is very, very sad. The, tr the, the caregivers cried when they got the news. They were heartbroken. They were also very worried about how Ruxa would do without his best friend because he was so dependent on her. Look at, this is Raina with her big, beautiful eyes. Here comes little Ray. Then caregiver Janet had an idea that might help both Ruxa and Raina. She brought in another Rhodesian Ridgeback puppy, nine week old little Ray, and here you see little Ray. Hopefully, little Ray would eventually become friends with Ruxa and be there for him when Raina wasn't there anymore. Little Ray could also help keep Raina's spirits up on the days that she didn't feel well, so she, they would help her when she was feeling sick because of her cancer. Little Ray was a bundle of energy and she bonded with Raina right away. But the first time she met Ruxa, she jumped on his head and Ruxa didn't like that at all. Remember early in the story when Ruxa was little, he jumped on Raina's head. So I think that's what all little animals like to do. The caregivers felt that Ruxa was unhappy with the new puppy because he already had a special friend, Raina. Ruxa didn't know Raina was sick, but he did know that he wanted to be with her all the time. And even though Ruxa and little Ray weren't best friends, they still played chase sometimes. Here's Ruxa playing chase with little Ray. A few months went by and something strange was happening. Raina didn't seem sick anymore. The veterinarians examined her and they were shocked by what they saw. The two smaller tumors had totally disappeared and the one in her shoulder was now small enough to be removed with surgery. It was nothing short of a miracle. And remember I said earlier, there was really no cure for these tumors, so we were not treating them. They somehow disappeared on their own, which is why we're calling it a miracle. The caregivers were overjoyed with the news. No one could explain what had just happened, but it didn't matter there was a chance that Raina was going to live. Veterinarians removed Raina's shoulder tumor and then she started three rounds of chemotherapy, which means she was given medicine to kill any of the remaining cancer cells. Raina's caregiver, Kristen, took her to the hospital for the chemo treatments. Raina was an excellent patient. She lay quietly on the table while nurses shaved her leg and injected her with a medicine. Throughout the chemo, Kristen held Raina's head in her arms and talked to her quietly. You'll be playing with Ruxa and little Ray in no time, Raina whispered Kristen. And I actually was able to go to one of Raina's uh, chemotherapy treatments at the veterinary hospital 
And I was amazed because Raina was so calm. And when they asked her to get up on the table, she quietly jumped on the table and she laid down. It was as if she knew they were helping her. Amazing, amazing to be able to see that. Best friends forever. Today, Raina is cancer free. She and Ruxa spent every minute with each other, playing, going for walks and snuggling. Little Ray joins them too. She and Ruxa are now friends, so the three of them live together. Every day, Ruxa and Raina's caregivers are grateful that they have one another. Even though the odds were against them, Ruxa learned to run and Raina survived cancer. Best friends like Ruxa and Raina prove that miracles can and do happen. And here's a picture. And, and that is the end of the story, but I would like to share my screen with you and share some of my favorite, favorite cheetah facts with you. And then we can um, have you ask questions. So I'm going to share the screen and here we go. Let me do this, just takes a minute. Hold on, it's coming up. You see the Thank screen? You that lovely story. Thank you. Oh, there we go. This, hold on, can everybody, can everybody see the picture? You can see. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So I'm excited to share some of these facts with them. And, and I'm sharing my favorite fact with you first. So all of you can look at a cheetah and you see that it has spots on it, right? Well, my favorite cheetah fact is that a cheetah's skin is covered in black spots, just like their fur. And the black fur grows out of the spots. And I'm gonna show you this. You see this photo, you can see this is Ruxa right after surgery. And if you look closely at his shoulder, you'll see where the hair is shaved away. And do you see those spots on his skin? I know, I think it's interesting. And here's what's even more interesting. The black hair is actually a little bit longer than the golden hair. So that is my absolute favorite cheetah fact. But there are other really fun cheetah facts too. I mentioned earlier that cheetahs are the fastest land mammal and they can run 70 miles an hour, but they can own, and that's as fast, that's as fast as your parents drive the car, but they can only run that fast for a very short distance. So what happens is if they see prey, like they see a baby wildebeest, they can have that burst of speed for a few seconds and then hopefully they will catch the wildebeest, but if they don't, th they can't continue running at 70 miles an hour because it's very exhausting as you can only imagine. And the cheetah's body is built for speed. You can look at this, you can look at their tail, they use it as a rudder and their body is slender and streamlined. But also cheetahs have what are called non-retractable claws. So if any of you have cats, think about their claws. The claws can come out and then they go back inside and they're really, really sharp. If you look at your dog's feet, you can see the claws all the time. And that is, those are the claws that cheetahs have on their feet. And they have these claws because they act as cleats and help them gain traction when they're running. So here's a picture of a cheetah running and you see its claws are out and you can see how they're helping this cheetah make this crazy turn in the dirt. And they, they like a football player might have cleats or a baseball player on their shoes to help them have traction on the grass. The non-retractable claws help the cheetahs um, cling to the ground when they run. And Cheetahs have tear tracks that run down their face. And the black tear, they're not really tear tracks, they're, they're black fur, but what they are is those tear tracks help cut down the sun's glare when the cheetah is running. 
And again, you may have seen people, men and women in sports who have black under their eyes, and that helps cut down the glare of the sun. But another thing about those tear tracks, this is gonna help you if a lot of people say, well, how do you tell the difference between a cheetah and a leopard because they both have spots? Now, I've worked at the zoo for a very long time and I know just by looking at the shape of their body and their faces, I can tell the difference. But an easy way for you to tell the difference if you're just looking at the face is a cheetah has those tear tracks under its eyes and a leopard does not have tear tracks under its eyes. And that's a very, very easy way to tell the difference between a cheetah and a leopard. And cheetah mothers usually have two to four cubs, but a cheetah mother can have as many as eight cubs. And that is a lot of baby cheetahs. This is one of our cheetahs from the safari park. Her name is Addison. And several years ago, she gave birth to six cubs. Can you imagine taking care of six cubs, let alone eight cub, cubs? That's just, that's a lot of babies to take care of. But Addison was a very good mother and she raised all six of her cubs who are all grown up now. Cheetahs are very vocal. I told you about how cheetahs Purr, or how cheetahs chirp. They can purr, they can growl, they can snarl, they can hiss, and they can actually make a coughing sound. But there's one sound that cheetahs cannot make that lion and tigers can make. And that is cheetahs cannot roar. Lions and tigers can go rawr. A cheetah cannot do that. A cheetah can only purr, and the purr sounds very similar to the purr that a, a, a pet house cat might make, but it's just quite a bit louder. And I will also tell you, because I have been licked by one of our cheetah ambassadors, that cheetahs have a very rough tongue, just like your cat might have. Cheetahs come from Africa. But you might, you see the dark green, that is where they live in Africa. Many years ago, they lived all over Africa, but now they're a critically endangered species. But here's the big surprise. Cheetahs also live in Asia. No, they used to live in India. They don't live there anymore. But if you look up in the right corner, you'll see that dark green and that is Iran. And so there is a small population of cheetahs that lives in Iran. And you might wonder why are cheetahs critically endangered? I will tell you in the wild, there are only 7,000 approximately cheetahs left, which is not very many. And a lot of it is because they're losing their habitat. They're losing their homeland to agriculture and cities. Um, there's a shortage of prey animals and those are the animals that they eat. Uh, they're being killed by ranchers who think that the cheetahs are killing their livestock, but actually it's, it's usually not the cheetahs, it's usually leopards and lions, but cheetahs operate in the daytime. And so ranchers in African countries often blame the cheetah, but I have good news about that that I'll tell you about in a minute. There's the illegal pet trade, and they're also hunted for their beautiful, beautiful coats. So there are many things being done to help protect cheetahs. Lots of national parks, anti-poaching patrols. But one of the things I think is really very, very special, and this is happening in a country called Namibia and other countries. You know how Ruxa and Reina and Little Ray are friends. Well, there is a dog, a giant sized dog, which you see in this picture called an Anatolian Shepherd. And what's happening is conservation organizations are raising these Anatolian shepherds and then they are giving them to the farmers so that these dogs can protect their livestock. So what's amazing is during the day, if a cheetah comes around, these dogs chase the cheetah away. And it really in essence saves the cheetah life. And these dogs are as big as cheetahs and the cheetahs don't want trouble. So when the dog goes after them and chases them, they run away. And this has 
has in many, many areas of Africa stopped the farmers from killing the cheetahs. So that's, that's, that's a very creative way that we have been able to protect cheetahs in their native homeland. And finally, I, I want to share a little behind the scenes story with you about the making of these footprints that you see in the back of the book. So those are actually Rooks's, Reina's, and Little Ray's real footprints. So you can see our uh, wildlife behavior specialist holding up the footprints that the dogs and the cheetah have just made. What I find really interesting is how many people it took to help each animal get its footprint. So first, let me show you. This is Raina, and it took two caregivers for Raina to give us her footprint. So one of them held her by the leash and painted her foot and then put it on the canvas. And then Raina got a treat, and she really didn't mind doing that at all. The same with Ruxa. It took two people to work with our beloved Ruxa, and you can see her pressing his paw down, and it's non-toxic paint. It's the kind of paint that you might use in your um, school projects, and then we wash their feet afterwards. But again, note how many people it takes for us to get Ruxa's paw prints. Well, as you know, when we got Little Ray's paw prints, she was a puppy. It took not two, but four people to be able to get Little Ray's footprints because she was a puppy and she was wild and she didn't want to hold still. And it, it cracked me up because a lot of people would say, well, Raina and Ruxa were bigger. It must have taken more. It's like, no, Ruxa and Raina were much better behaved than Little Ray. Now Little Ray is very well behaved, but, um, but it did take four people to help us get her paw prints for the back of the book. And finally, if any of you want to learn more about our San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance animals and our efforts for conservation, I have a website there if you'd like to share that with your parents. And if you'd like to know more about our hope and inspiration books, you can visit that website shopzoo.com. And I'd like to point out that we also have illustrated books, which are not, they're, they're stories about animals, but they're not about real animals and they're illustrated with, um, with art. So you also might be interested in some of those books. So I'm going to stop my share right now and come back to you and see if anybody has any questions. It, it's been so much fun. Thank you for being such a wonderful, audience. Oh, yes, I have okay. hands raised. Go ahead, Nevin. Did, um, did, did Raina see you when you were, uh, when you were there when she was having the surgery? Yes, she did. I actually rode from the safari park to the veterinary hospital with her caregiver. Um, so I had the privilege of actually being in a vehicle with her as, as well and was able to walk with her into the veterinary center. So, so she did know I was there and she was just such a good dog and knew, seemed to know that the, um, that the veterinary team were trying to help her. Does anyone else have a question? Oh, I see someone oh. in your class. Yeah. Okay, come on up, Ron. We have a couple. Okay. How how old was Raina when she got her surgery? She was young. She was three years old. And I saw her after her surgery, and she had a very big incision. I mean, it was bigger than you would think. And then what we did to keep it clean, we put a, a, a t-shirt over her. Um, normally, we would not dress our animals. But in this case, it actually worked because we could put her front legs through the arms of the shirt. 
and it, it covered her body and it, it kept her, um, her incision from becoming infected. Aji, did you have your question? Okay. Is it okay to send some kids up to ask? Sure, right. absolutely. And it's actually a comment. It's a big voice. And remember the part where Raina had a cancer? My yes. Cat, my cat just recently died of it. Oh no, I'm so sorry to hear that. How old was your cat? Oh. About 15 in human years. 15. I am very sorry. It is so hard when we lose our furry family members. So my heart goes out to you. It's it's very, very hard because they they hold such a special place in our lives and in our family. So I am thank you for sharing that. I'm I'm sorry. I hope you have wonderful memories of her. That's very hard. I've lost dogs as well, and it's always very, very hard for me. And it's not a her, it's a him. Oh, oh him. Okay, I'm your your little boy cat. So I'm I'm sorry for those that news. I hope you and your family are doing okay. I know you're missing him. Yeah. Okay. All right, Aria, and then Tessa, and then. Bye. Are they still at the safari park? Because I went with my friend and I don't think I saw them. Um, all of our cheetahs and dogs are at the safari park. They are not in, a, sometimes you can see them at our cheetah habitat and sometimes you can see them at the cheetah run, but they're not always out all the time. So you just have to be lucky to be able to see them or to be able to see them going for a walk. Oh, I see. So, so go back to the park and you just might see everybody. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, Tess. Um, how old are the animals now? Oh, I, I need to look at my calendar. I think six or seven. So this happened several, this happened several years ago. Not several years ago, but when all of you were probably very young. Thank you. All right, Silas. Okay, just two more after. <laughs> we have two more after this one. I love these questions. Um, I saw both all of them at the zoo, the safari park zoo, and um, my dog is now one. <laughs> what kind of dog do you have? Um, it's a mix of like nine. Is it a big dog or a little dog? It's a puppy still, but it's huge. Yeah. He's going to get here. He or she's going to get huge. Well, oh, that she's sounds already, fun. She's already huge and she's 70 pounds. Oh. Okay, that is a big dog. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's a, but that's nice to have a big dog. I like, I have smaller dogs, but uh, I like big dogs too. Thank you for sharing that. We're just going to go with Enzo and see their little, they have their hands up. Because we're not going to talk all about our dog. <laughs> Come on. Listen. Um, I have two things. Um, one is um, I have a um, dog that is a mix between two or three things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, one of, we, we don't know all of them, but we know like one or two. Um, one is a, um, American cattle dog. Oh yeah. Those are pretty. Um, and the second thing I was going to say, what is a question, um, I, I was going to ask um, how old is uh, Well, we just asked that, six or seven. Oh. Yeah, I need to look at my calendar on that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, maybe how long do they live? How long do, how long do they live? Yeah, normally, like a cheetah. Well, in the wild, cheetahs do not live as long as they do 
in um, zoos and sanctuaries. So in the wild, sometimes up to seven years, 10 years, but I can tell you that our oldest cheetahs that live at the zoo and safari park have lived to be 14 years old. And it's similar with large dogs as well. Sometimes they can live to be seven to 10 years. So they don't have as long a lifespan in general as smaller dogs. And I, I honestly don't know why that is, but you hear of dogs like poodles living to be 18. So uh, it's, it's, it's tough. So, but, but we have had several cheetahs at the zoo live to be 14 years old. And I just wanted to say to all of you that I, I am so happy to know that so many of you have pets, whether it's dogs or cats or fish. It's just really nice to know that you have animals in your home. That it, it's always special to me knowing that so many people have pets. And I, uh, I love my dogs and it's just exciting to hear about yours. Do you have time for one more question? I do. Okay. Yes, me. The panda. Okay. Um, is the flamingo from the flamingo book still at the zoo? Floyd, Floyd's flock is still at the zoo, and I am going to be reading that book in the, one of the coming months. And I love flamingos and. I'm going to tell you a fact about flamingos now that I'll probably repeat, but if you like flamingos, did you know that flamingos can snore and that they dream? And you'll have to tune in for when I read that book so I can tell you how we know that, but I have actually seen a video of a flamingo snoring and it's kind of a, just kind of a light snore, but I, that is your flamingo fact for the day. And that's actually probably my favorite flamingo fact because it was something I didn't know. Well, I am so grateful to have all of you tuning in today and listening to Rooks and Raina's story. And I hope I see you at our next story time. And if anyone wants the links that uh, George Ann shared in the last slide, I put those in the chat. So if you want to learn more about saving animals or you want to learn where you can buy the books, um, those links are in the chat for everyone. Um, if you wanted to see the book up close in person, we do have them here at the library. So if you want to come see the picture of uh, Ruxa's spotted cheetah skin, um, you can always check them out here too. Well, thank you everyone for coming. And of course, thank you most of all, George Ann. It was so lovely to have you. Um, unless anyone else has any other questions, uh, we will let you go. And we hope to see you back at our next Zoo Storytime next month. Thank you for having me. Thank you to the Coronado Library System. Bye everybody. Have a thank great rest so of your much. day. Thank you, George Ann. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, that sounds great. Bye, Miss Sarah. Bye.